What is going on guys, welcome back to the channel and if you're new here, hit the subscribe button down below because we are only small but we are growing slowly, slowly and we're going to get better. But if you remember, in one of my last videos we put the TT on H&R loading springs to fix that arch gap and we definitely did. But when fitting the springs I found out that the front shocks, more so on one side than the other, have blown out and they don't really work. So what we're going to do today is we're going to fit some new front shocks, some new front drop links, some new front ball joints, some new rear shocks, because if the fronts have gone, the rears can't be far behind, and some new rear drop links. So basically all of the suspension on the Audi TT. So now we've got everything we need to fix the TT, let's get straight into it. Let's jack it up and get these blown out shocks off. I have done a video on how to take these off because when we done the lowering springs, we had to take them off to change the springs. So if you want to know how to take them off, click the top right hand corner now because I'm gonna do this on a time lapse just because I've got all four corners to do and I've got a fair bit to do. I'll show you it all, but it won't be a tutorial. But I'll try and include as much info as I can so if you come up stuck when you're doing this at home, you'll know what to do. The first thing I need to do is break this drive shaft bolt free because if I don't do it now, I won't be able to when everything else is off. Next, I'm gonna back the bolts out that hold the brake caliper in with the 21mm socket and get that out the way. Now we need to disconnect the ABS sensor, the brake wear sensor and take the clip out that holds the brake line in so we can swing the whole unit over and rest the caliper on the floor so it's not hanging by the brake line because that can burst the brake lines. Now with the brake caliper off we can remove the brake disc and then work on the track rod end and remove that from the hub. Your track rod end is bolted to your steering rack and it pushes or pulls the hub depending on what way you turn the steering wheel. So we'll put the nut back on slightly on a few threads and give it a whack and that's the track rod end off. Now it's time to remove the front drop link and luckily I've had these off before but when I took them off for the very first time they were an absolute pain of a job so if you're going to do these make sure you're drowned in WD-40 first or you've got a breaker bar, grips or a blowtorch. And if neither of them work, whip out your angle grinder. So it's just the ball joint and the loose drive shaft bolt holding this on on the bottom end so we'll get these three nuts off the ball joint, that'll come out. Take the drive shaft bolt out and push the drive shaft through and then the last thing holding it up is three bolts on top of the strut tower. And now after all that hard work we can finally remove the hub and the suspension strut together. And that's the front suspension assembly removed. So now the strut, we just need to get it from there into the vise. And then we can put the new shock and the new ball joint on and then when we fit it all back together we'll fit the new drop link so then everything on the passenger side is done. So now that it's in the vise, we've got to get that bolt out. And as you can see, the shock goes through the hub. So we need to get that bolt out, splay the bottom open to slide the shock out, take the spring off, take the top mount off and put it all on the new shock, ready to fit it. So I tried many different methods to try and press the shock out of the hub, none of which worked, so I thought, let's go back to the old fashioned way and give it a whack with a really big hammer. And you know what, the traditional ways are always the best, because it worked. Finally split the shock from the hub and that wasn't easy at all. So now that that and that are two separate parts, we can get that back in the vise. We can take the spring off, swap the shock and the top mount, and we're good to go. Probably shouldn't have chose one of the hottest days of the year so far to be doing this, but there we are. So after doing this in my last video, I found the best way for me personally to remove the spring from the shock is to back the nut off as best I can with a buzz gun, not all the way because I don't want to lose an eye. Then I'll get the spring compressor on the spring, compress the spring, and I can take the nut off completely and then I can remove the spring from the shock along with the top mount. So 
So I've the old shocks off. This is what I mean by a blown shock, because you can see there's oil all around it, and I can do that. And as far as I'm aware, I shouldn't be able to push that shock so easily. But now that everything's off, I can fit the new shock with the lowering spring, so hopefully it actually has a better ride to it. And it's just what I've done in the previous video when I fitted the H&R spring, so I'm just gonna time-lapse this again. I'm gonna get through it all quickly. We'll fit it back to the car, and then we'll move on to doing the rear dampers and the rear drop links, because this shouldn't take too long. So fitting everything back to the new shock is the exact reverse of what we did to remove them, so it's not that difficult. While I'm fitting up the new shock, if you've got this far into the video and you're not subscribed, hit the subscribe button down below because it really helps us out as a channel and we are growing. So if you want to see more car content and more cars on the channel, which I promise there will be, hit the subscribe button down below, turn on that notifications bell and click the like button, really help us out. And that way when we do get bigger as a channel, you can say you've been there to support me since day one. And why don't you give me a follow on Instagram where you can keep up with all the little updates I post on there, on my stories and when I post videos. And that's the new shock ready to fit to the hub. Also, I have got new ball joints, but I've decided not to fit them, well, on this side, purely because the ball joint on there actually seems okay. So I think it's a bit unnecessary to fit it when what's on there is okay. And if I fit the new one, it may, rest, it may mess with the tracking a bit too much for me to be able to sort out myself. So for now, I'm gonna leave the old ball joint on, but that that's an easy replacement on the car in the future, so. If I have to, I can do it later on. But let's get that back in there with the, there's gone, with the hub, and we'll get the wheel back on and the car back on the floor so I can do the rears, then I can do the opposite side. Now I need to remove the bottom of the drop link from the sway bar, or anti-roll bar, depending on what you call it. And I forgot, I've never taken this off on this side before, so this was an absolute pain of a job and it took a very long time. So what your drop link does is it connects your stroke tower to what's called an anti-roll bar or a sway bar. And it stops, but it doesn't stop. It prevents body roll from being excessive when you take corners, which allows the car to grip the road a bit better. And not only does it help in terms of safety, it's also a bit of a performance mod because you can grip the road better because it allows your tyre to have more contact patch on the road and you can put your foot down and it sticks. A little word of advice if you've got to change your drop links. Don't. <laughs> they were so much more difficult than they were supposed to be. But yeah, if you are going to do them yourself, make sure you allocate a lot of time and you've got some vice grips, big hammer, a breaker bar, something because that was horrendous. I had to use some mole grips in the end spanner wedge the spanner against the arm and then just push as hard as i could but now that that's off i can fit the new one and hopefully i don't have to touch these on this car ever again the only issue is i've got the other side to do which i'm not looking forward to but now we've got the new drop links which have nice new nuts so i don't have to fight with them and that lets you just bolts on to the bottom through that way and then the top goes onto the little hanger on the strut Now the drop thing's bolted to the sway bar and I've just got the hub onto the shock by literally putting a block of wood there, whacking the hub onto the shock and then when it bottoms out, just tapping the top there until it seats it home and then tightening that bolt. So now we'll get it all back together and we'll move on to the rear. So let's get everything back on. And there it is, everything's back on. We've got the brand new drop link, nice and shiny in the back. Brand new shock, so we don't have a rattly ride. Now we'll just get the wheel back on and we can move on to the rears and I'll do the opposite sides off camera because, you know, it's the same thing on both sides. So that's the car on the floor. We'll now get the back end up and we'll do that bit. So I've never actually done the rears on this before, but looking at it, if I'm right, it doesn't seem that bad. I think it's three bolts and a nut on top of the rear damper. So looking at the rear, if you peel away the arch lining, there's a bolt there. Same on the opposite side, just a bit further up, I think. Yep, yeah, there's a bolt there, and then right around the back, there's a bolt there. So I think you literally take those three bolts out, pull that rear damper out, swap the top mount, which is what the two bolts on the top are for, and then 
fit the new one i can't see it being anything else it doesn't seem too complex so we'll give it a go see how far we get and if i come across anything else i'll let you know Well, the good thing is, like I said, there was only one, two, and three bolts, and the rear damper's off. So now we need to get that nut out the top, get the new damper into this top mount, and we can fit it back on the same way it came off. We also need to swap the plastic and the bump stop, I think. And that's it. And so far, the rear's been so much easier than the front. So to change the top mount on these, there's a nut inside on the, well, the top mount. You need a 16mm goose neck to go inside and bite the nut and then you need a spanner or some form of pliers to grab onto the top of the strut because that will want to spin so you need to hold that while spinning the nut to take this off to move this the plastic and the bump stop away from the old rebound so you can stick the new one on so after a lot of tedious swapping and changing with the gooseneck spanner and the adjustable wherever that's gone this has finally come off and all you need to do is once you get the nut out like so the whole unit just slides off and there is the old rebound so all you need to do now is get the new one take the band off take the plastic off slot it into there bolt it up with the nut and then stick it back in the exact same way you took it out well in reverse that's now the new shaft fitted the old top mount and we can get it in. So that's now the new rebound on the back. And now we just need to get the wheel back on and we can lower the car down. I was gonna do the rear drop link, but as you can see outside, it's getting dark. I'm in work tomorrow. And currently it is 10 past nine at night and I've got to be up at five in the morning. So I can't stay here too much longer. I'm still got to do the opposite side. So I think that's going to be it for now. So we'll get the wheel on and we'll see how it sits in terms of the ride height. Because the shocks could have actually changed the ride height considering these ones actually work. But the drop links on the rears are exactly the same as the front. The only difference is they're not as long, but it's just a bolt in the top and a bolt in the bottom, and that's literally it. So that's the left hand side of the car, done. But again, I do still need to do the driver's side, so I'm gonna cut the video here. That's going to be everything for now. But that's the front and the rear shocks done. We didn't do the rear drop links, which is unfortunate. But like I said, if you do want to do them, they're exactly the same as the front. So it's not too difficult. And I know we didn't do the ball joints on the front, but that was only because the ball joints on the front were actually in alright condition. I only bought them as a just in case because I didn't want to get that far into a job and then realise I need the ball joints and not have them. So at least now when they do need doing, if they ever do need doing, I can swap them out. So now I'm going to drive the car for the next few days, see how the H&R Lona Springs actually ride with good shocks to make sure I've done a fair review on it. And then I'll do a review video on the H&R Springs. So if you're thinking of lowering your car yourself, you could look into them and I'll tell you everything. I like everything, I dislike, if anything, and you'll know exactly what to expect if you buy them and lower your car yourself. And if you choose to, watch the video on how to do it. But that's going to be it for this video, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Remember to like, comment, subscribe. Hit that notifications bell so you get an update every time I post a video. And I'll see you in the next one.